What should I spend my time doing? Those are your invitation to live differently. And then the thing that you find, the thing that I found in my life, and I, and I think that the history books echo this, is that you spend your entire life preparing for a moment and you don't get to know when that moment is. All you get to do is show up and be your best and do your best in every single moment that you're given. Happy Monday. Welcome back to another episode of Morning Coffee. I'm Rick Alexander, and I still love doing this show because I'm endlessly fascinated with you, with me, with the world, and the way that we're interacting within it. I think it's just, it's insane. I think this life is nothing but potential, and I think that me coming to that conclusion is the thing that has changed my life. I look at everything with the possibility of what it could be and not for what it is, and i that's what I hope for you on this Monday morning. That's not the message, but that is what I hope for you, you know, generally, always. We have a lot of news coming coming out on Wednesday. I'm going to open up registration for the next Clarity Academy, which is going to kick off on October 16th. On Friday, I've got an announcement coming on this year's Sufferfest. So if you're interested in supporting me and seeing all the crazy shit that I do uh, in the endurance world, then tune in on Friday. I'll be dropping the next announcement, something I am really excited. People that have been listening to the show for a while, you know that the two things that I love the most in this world are adventure and goodwill, and they're both free. So you can do either, whenever you want, and I'm really excited about combining them for this year's Sufferfest. So again, Friday, I'll talk about what that is. And the last thing I want to say is I have co-created a course on coaching with the human that has taken over the spot as love of my life. If you've listened to the show before, if you listened to Thursday's episode, in fact, you heard her and I talk about some of our philosophy on coaching. And if you're interested in becoming a coach, developing yourself within a niche, or learning how to communicate better with your clients, and really taking a focus on some of the emotional IQ and soft skills that are involved with coaching, plus not to mention how to just go about mining yourself for content and developing your own coaching philosophy. If you're interested in those things, send us a DM at dbird20 or at rickalexander underscore, and we'll send you a link and you can jump in the course. The course is $269. It's eight weeks long. And it's going to walk you through everything you need to know to develop a coaching philosophy and then learn how to implement it. You know, one of my foundational beliefs in life, if you will, is the idea that the universe or God or whatever it is, however you conceptualize whatever's larger than you, is always sort of inviting us to become a better version of who we are. There, the, there's a, always an invitation to a different kind of world. And, you know, a lot of times we feel trapped within the emotions that we feel. We feel anger, we feel sadness, we feel loneliness, and those, those feel like traps if we're not careful. But if we can change our perspective, what we come to find is that they're always invitations. They're always invitations to live higher, to take a different path, to live differently, and to change your outlook. And so if you find yourself going through a lot of turmoil, especially in times of indecision, in times of change, then what you really need to look for is a new perspective. I think I credit that with one of the things that's really helped my military transition. When I was getting out of the military, I realized a lot of things in life weren't working for me, but I didn't blame those things on the military, right? Me wanting to live differently, that was only part of it. I knew that I could replace the military with any other thing between nine and five and I was still going to find myself in a problem because I was still the problem, right? So I realized that I had to reimagine myself. I had to do the deep inner work, which is why I coach people on that now and why I have the show and why I talk about it so much because I realized I needed to transform my consciousness from the inside out. And in doing that, I was awakened to the fact that the soul is sort of always nudging you in one direction or the other. Now, we are trained not to listen to ourselves a lot of the times, right? We, are ten, we tend to repress our feelings and not deal with whatever we're thinking or feeling or going through, and we certainly don't vocalize it. Uh, but the problem with repression is that then you, you're no longer in tune with yourself, and you're the guiding compass for your life. Nobody has the answers for your life better than you do. So to repress any part of you is to do yourself a disservice because now you're no longer in touch with the parts of you that could be guiding you in a direction. And so what I want to do today is start with a little bit of a background. I'm sure this is something we all learned in school. It's something you understand. But I want to to dissect this from a little bit of a different angle. On December 1st, 1955, during a typical evening rush hour in Montgomery, Alabama, a 42-year-old woman took a seat on the bus on her way home from the Montgomery Fair Department store where she worked as a seamstress. Before she reached her destination, she quietly set off a social revolution when the bus driver instructed her to move back, and she refused. 
Rosa Parks, an African-American, was arrested that day for violating a city law requiring racial segregation of public buses. Now, we all know that. We all know the Rosa Parks story and the legend that it's become and the social revolution that was to follow. But what we don't understand or what we often forget about is that in her row there were three other ladies, all African-American, and when instructed, all three of them had gotten up and they moved back to the bus. Now, we don't know their story and we don't know what they were going through that day and we don't know what they had done up until then. But what I do know is that in an instant, truly, your soul is going to nudge you one way or the other. And it's these very, very small decisions that we make. We feel a nudge. Should we do it or shouldn't we do it? Should we go? Should we not go? Do we dive in or do we stay up here? Right? And, there, and your soul is always nudging you one direction or the other. And a lot of times we allow fear or cowardice or even past programming and things that make us feel like we have to be a certain way to not listen to that intuitive nudge that, that's going to push us in a direction. Now, like I said, three women decided to get up and move to the back of the bus, and who could blame them? But one of those people listened to their nudge, right? They, they decided to stay. But the story doesn't end there. See, what's important to understand is that Rosa Parks had been uh, a member of the Montgomery NAACP leading up until that point. She had been in conflict. She had been fighting this social revolution over and over. And, you know, we're taught different narratives around this. I remember one of the stories that I heard is that she was just tired that day and she didn't feel like getting up. But that's not true at all. What she was tired of was injustice. What she was tired of was being told where to sit on the damn bus, right? And so she had been training all of her life for the moment that her soul nudged her and she decided today's the day that it stops. And so we're going through our lives all the time and we're feeding ourselves all the time and we're deciding what we should care about. And we have a very limited bandwidth. And if we don't decide, then the world decides for us and the things we end up caring about are TV shows and pop culture and things that really don't affect us too much. But if you can get internal and you can figure out what are the things that I should really care about? What should I spend my time doing? Those are your invitation to live differently. And then the thing that you find, the thing that I found in my life, and I, and I think that the history books echo this, is that you spend your entire life preparing for a moment and you don't get to know when that moment is. All you get to do is show up and be your best and do your best in every single moment that you're given. You get to care about things that you deeply care about. You get to choose passion over apathy. And then one day your soul is going to nudge you. And what I think is all of the work that you had done previously to that point is what's going to decide whether or not you listen to that soul nudge or not. Now, like I said, three other people got up. Head Rosa Parks got up. We probably wouldn't be talking about it today. It, it wouldn't have ignited the social revolution and outrage that needed to happen. We needed that martyr in that moment. It was time. Enough was enough. And as I was meditating on the strength and the courage that that must have taken, because imagine a society against you. Imagine a society that's telling you what to do and will jail you if you don't do the right thing. To listen to, to, listen to the voices that are telling you to move back and telling you to conform and telling you how to be and what you are, Right? To listen to those voices, especially when they're overwhelming, is a lot easier than listening to the nudge of the soul. But you've got a path. And if you don't listen to the soul nudge, who knows what the world looks like after that? But the more important question is if you do listen to it, then what does the world look like? Rosa Parks died in 2005 in a world that was profoundly changed from the one that she was born into. And all of that was possible because of the tiniest nudge of the soul. And look, each of us are born into a world that's not quite as good as it could be. And we get caught up thinking that it's you and I against each other. It's you and I against the, the belief that we have. Look, you and I, we can disagree on the meaning of life and still help each other find meaning in life. You and I can listen to the nudge of the soul to follow our truth, to live forthrightly, to choose passion over apathy. And then we get an opportunity to profoundly change the world that we were born into. And it happens all the time, and it happens because people listen to that small, still voice that's within them. You know the answers for your life. And by ignoring them, nobody can blame you. Look, it's difficult to drive against the pattern of traffic, okay? It's difficult to swim against the tide. These things aren't easy, and nobody can blame you when you don't want to stand up and fight. But the truth is that you're always training. You're always in practice. You're always preparing to change the world to become a little bit more of what you know it should be. And I think what the history books really teach us is that fortune always favors the bold. 
I love you guys. I hope you have an amazing weekend. I hope your Monday is short, your coffee is tall. We'll talk tomorrow on Morning Coffee. Don't know about sing my name in flashing lights. Don't know about the penthouse a thousand feet in the sky. That's girl, I don't think I'm ready to fall in love. But if your dreams don't, yeah, you say ain't big enough, big enough. Grip my job at the store. I couldn't take it anymore. The climb is harder than the fall. Got me feeling vertigo. Ran a mile to the shore. Let my footprints in the sand. I know I'm here for something more. But I've been running from it far too long. Don't know about seeing my name in flashing lights. Don't know about penthouse a thousand feet in the sky. And girl, I don't think I'm ready to fall in love. But if your dreams don't scare you, they ain't big enough. dream